Today I'm speaking with Microsoft Developer Evangelist Jennifer Marsman. Jennifer, how are you? Hi, great. How are you? Okay, great, thanks. Um, Jennifer, I've been hearing a lot from Microsoft about something called cloud services. Can you define that term for me, cloud services? Yeah, so cloud computing is a kind of new way of doing computing. Well, it's not really new. Um, but it's just having all of your services and your resources in the cloud. So the cloud would be up on the internet or away, so not in your own data center, but having someone else do the management and, and running of those of those services for you. And okay. there's, a, there's actually a lot of advantages to that. Like, such as? Such as one of the things is, is green computing. If you're into green IT and, and really helping the environment, the average data center averages, I think, like 7% utilization or something like that okay. because you have to plan for the max um, the maximum load that you're going to handle so think of a pizza place mm -hmm. um, you know you have to be able to handle the load that you're going to get on like Super Bowl Sunday sure. um, so that you can you can still use the internet and, and order those days but on a, on a random Tuesday you know you're, you're not going to be using all of that capacity you can't just throw away the stuff and have exactly load you need to be able days. to scale up so one way you can deal with that is instead of having your own data center use a cloud computing solution. And Microsoft has one, and ours is the, the Azure Services platform. Google and um, Amazon and other companies have cloud computing solutions as well. And, um, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, <laughs> I'm just going, I'm just going. This is um, awesome. Yeah, so, You're answering the question that I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, so the Azure Services platform is Windows Azure, which is kind of a distributed OS for the cloud. You can think of it that way. Okay. And then there's a number of other value-added services on top of that. And you don't need to use all of them. You can kind of a la carte pick ones you can you want to use. What are some examples of services? Some example of those would be .NET services, um, as well as SharePoint. There's um, some SharePoint and dynamic CRM stuff. There's the live services, which I know that you're familiar with. You've done some talks on live services. Um, .NET services, and I'm forgetting one. Um, SQL services. Thank you. SQL services. <laughs> yep. Right. .NET, yeah, SQL services, um, SharePoint Dynamics, and Live. So those five are kind of the value added services that you get with, with Windows, with Windows Azure. Okay. Or you can get them separately too. Okay, so you can get them. You have to, this is a service that you would pay Microsoft for access to right. use their, uh, their computing center. Right. And uh, you would what call programs that are written and deployed onto Microsoft's computer center out in the cloud somewhere? Is that right? Yes. How does that work? So, yeah, great, great question. So, one of the ways you can think about it is, first of all, you don't have to use all of those, and you, you don't even have to have, you could utilize, for instance, live services from within your own data center. I think it's kind of, the way we typically draw it is these five services and then Windows Azure on the bottom, but that's a little bit um, confusing because you don't necessarily have to run all of those on top of Windows Azure. You could use like live services from something running in your own data center, so you can okay. grab them as, as you'd like. But with Windows Azure, what you get is the ability to scale up and scale down however you want to, and that's a, the really, really powerful part, I think. Because think of that scenario of the pizza place and, and a typical 7% sure. utilization. And then when Super Bowl Sunday um, does come, you can scale up very quickly and then scale back down. And then the, the exciting thing about that is you're only paying for what you're using. So if I'm only using this much you know, memory and this much CPU power and this much storage space, but I'm only paying for this much instead of having to have the machines um, and all that stuff and, and be, you know, the concerns of like cooling them and all those other things that you have to worry about um, with routine maintenance, patching, things like that, all of that kind of gets taken off your plate. Okay, and this is a, so I, I totally relate to that. I worked for a long time for um, a retailer, a large retail chain, and they did about 80% of their revenues between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah. Um, but they still had not have that capacity. That's a, uh, in house in their own data centers. That's a great example. Yeah, that's a great example. Another big example is um, Major League Baseball. Uh -huh. So they, um, for instance, um, right before, like in the winter, when baseball season is off, no, they, the website to MLB.com is like the traffic is down here. Mm -hmm. But then if you look at like um, right before the World Series or when people are starting up their fantasy baseball teams, Got you it. know the traffic goes way up there. So Microsoft has enough servers to scale that one. We're Absolutely. About that. Uh, how would I? Um, uh, well, how do I know, first of all, that Microsoft has that capacity? I know they're a big company, but I, I haven't seen their servers. 
Yeah, yeah, no, that that is, I think that's the scariest thing um, to people about cloud computing is the fact that you can't see it. Mm -hmm. It's not physically with you, and, and so that, that that is a little bit scary. But remember how scary like online banking was when we first started that? I mean, that was terrifying. That was really scary to think of. Because you're giving you're, up control. I, like, you're giving up control, and you're online, and, you know, is it really secure and stuff? Uh, so um, I, I'm sure... You know, we might have problems at the beginning because cloud computing is a relatively new thing. Mm -hmm. But um, as we keep going, um, it's nice to to have that option. And sure. I do think it is the way of the future because it's not. This isn't just a Microsoft thing. This is Amazon and Google and Microsoft. Um, are all kind of moving in this direction. Sure, Amazon's kind of softened everybody up. Yeah, yeah, I think they, they can. Cloud services were this, uh, or cloud computing was right. A couple of years ago. Um, what's uh, so from a developer's point of view? How do I start taking advantage of that? Is it a different way of writing code? Is APIs that I call? Yeah. Call so if you go to um, www.azure.com, you can um, download some of the stuff to get started. Okay. Right now, there's a Windows Azure SDK, mm -hmm. so you can um, download the SDK and then you can have a, um, a get a token, which is kind of like an invitation code, and that will give you your own little piece of the cloud, um, yeah. some space up there. The yeah, a little account on the cloud, so that way you can you can utilize it. And this is in um, in um, TTP right now, so. It's not, um, not even a beta yet. Yeah, not even a beta yet. Right. So we're still CTP um, version. So one, um, but when you do that, um, you can download. There's actually two separate pieces to download. There's the Windows Azure SDK, and then there's also the Visual Studio tools for Windows Azure, or maybe it's the Windows Azure tools for Visual Studio. I'm okay. not sure it's which way they, they put it. But um, that is, if you if you download those, those will give you templates within Visual Studio, so you can just do file new cloud service. Um, okay. And then it will set up all the references of the DLLs and everything for you to just get started with developing it. Okay, and then am I, I going to call this like a uh, like a web service? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of it does look like a, a web service. So what what the project looks like is there's something there, there's actually two different kinds of roles. There's a web role and a worker role. Okay. So if you get started with a web role, what that's going to look like that template is going to look like two separate little projects. And the first project is basically going to be an ASP.NET project. It's going to look very, very similar. So if you're familiar with ASP.NET right now, then you'll probably be pretty familiar with that. And then the second piece is the cloud-specific part. So that's going to contain in it um, some information on whether you have a web role or a worker role. And then it's going to contain a configuration file and a definition file. And so your definition file is going to have um, some information on it. Um, basically, if you have any configuration settings, you can list those out in there. Um, and then if um, stuff about like kind of your web role and worker role, so various settings in there, but the, kind of the names of the settings are in the definition file. And then the configuration file contains name value pairs for your setting. So you can actually set like I have, you know, this property and here's the value for it. And that way, anything that's in your configuration file, you can tweak those settings while your service is running, and then um, you can change them basically with the service running without having to like redeploy the whole service. Okay. Uh, so when we say deploy the service, I'm going to deploy the code that I've written out to the cloud? Yes. How does that happen? Good question. So if you are using Visual Studio, you can right-click um, the project and hit publish, and it will create for you a package. Um, there's actually two pieces. There's a package that um, it's going to look for to deploy up to the cloud. It asks for two things. Um, there's a, a portal that allows you to, to upload your stuff to the cloud, mm -hmm. and it's going to ask you for two things. One of them is that package. The second thing is the configuration file. So when you hit publish, what it does is creates a new kind of folder and gives you a package and a configuration file. Mm -hmm. So it's all set. Um, if you don't choose to use Visual Studio, then you can also get um, the same functionality with the SDK. If you look in the sample section, just in the Hello World section, there are some things called, um, I think it's um, build me, pack me, and run me, that CMD. So they're all command line things, and that does okay. the exact same thing for you on the command line. So you don't necessarily need Visual Studio. You can just build it on the command line, um, and the packet will create that package for you, and then run it will we'll run the package. And so you can then um, use that to package up your solution and deploy it up to the cloud. Okay, so I could also have those uh, calls for those CMD files uh, from within my uh, build scripts. Yep. Using TFS or something. Yep, you can do that tool, easily. Yep. Uh, to automate the deployment process. Yep. And um, there's also support um, for, for other languages as well, like PHP um, was announced with the oh, March really? CTP, I think. Yeah, Microsoft there's support, support PHP? I know it. <laughs> <laughs> there is support via um, fast CGI. So um, you can you can do that as well and have PHP running on Azure, which is pretty wow. cool stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, one thing I hadn't heard about is pricing. I know you said that it would be based yes. on usage. 
But yes. is there any idea about where it's going to be? Um, I'm guessing it will be competitive with, with the other offerings that are currently out there. Um, they're not going to release pricing until um, much closer to the ship date. Which but, is right. Which is, I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it will be, um, it, right now the, the thing that they're saying is that it's going to be based on data storage, um, CPU, and um, oh, what are the other things, Me memory usage or something like that. But they, there's, it, it's basically what you're, the you amount that you're using. using, you're paying for what you're using. Okay. Yeah. So if you're using up more bandwidth, then expect that you're going to be paying a little more kind sure. of deal. Sure. And, uh, and hopefully uh, the, the price point determined by <laughs> the determining point would be whether or not that service cost would be cheaper than maintaining and buying all the hardware right. year round. Yep. Um, is this uh, is this service designed more for um, small companies that don't want to buy a, a data center, That's or for big companies that maybe have this uh, cyclical needs that you talked about? That's a great question. I actually think it makes sense for both. I think it's really compelling for small companies because. I mean, with a small company, you just never know. You could take off. Are you familiar with the term slash dotted? Slash dotted. Slash oh, dotted. If a company, if a get website gets slashed. Yeah, so if, you, if somehow you, you make slash dot, well, maybe dig is probably the new slash dot. But if suddenly some high traffic website um, you know, sees you and thinks you're cool and then writes you up, and all of a sudden, all the people that is, you know, follow that high traffic site, Follow, go to your site, you could totally crash your site, and then, you know, since they, you're brand new, that kind of leaves a black eye with your, your reputation, and sure. so it can, be, it can be difficult to recover from that. So that's, um, that's kind of the phenomenon, and, and something like Azure, if that does happen, you can just turn up the dial and boom, you're, you're set. It's listen, I, I make a phone call or I send an email. Yeah, you actually, it's something called, it's right in your configuration file, there's something called instances equals whatever, so by oh, default instances I equals know, one, I and there's one, one instance of your service, so scale it up as much as you need okay. to handle the load, and, and, and you're good. Um, then, um, so, so for small companies, I think it makes a lot of sense, and plus they might not have the resources to invest in a, a, a huge, that's a huge upfront cost in data center, especially if you don't know if your company's gonna make it, sure. and you know, you're young, you don't have a lot of money yet, that's then. That's effect yeah. might be for a few days. You really don't know until you really later don't on know. that's gonna peak in the traffic. Yeah, you never know how your, your traffic's gonna look. So I mean, I think it's really, really compelling for small okay. businesses. Um, but I also think there's a, a good place for it in, in, in large companies as well, because I mean, when you think about it, uh, uh, maybe a large, let's go back to our pizza place example. Um, their job is making pizza and to be more efficient in making pizza and get good ingredients and to sell the pizza. And I mean, they probably don't want to have to worry about their IT. So in that situation too, and it, especially if you do have a data center and it is sitting at 7% utilization, then, you know, cloud computing, man, like just kind of you don't have to, you can focus on your core business problems sure. and, and really deal that and you don't have to be an IT shop as well. Okay. Well, it sounds really compelling. I'm, uh, I've played with it a little bit. I'm excited. Yeah, about it. it's good I, stuff. I, I, I can't wait to see when it gets closer to the bank, when it gets closer to uh, when we can actually build enterprise applications on top of it. Yeah. To get on CTP. Yeah. Anything else we can, can tell us about? Where's a good place to go to get more information right away from into it? I would go to www.azure.com, and um, it's it's not the easiest site to navigate, to be honest. Okay. But um, um, let me know if you have trouble finding things. It's um, but but all the information is there. You'll find information on Windows Azure as well as those five extra services, okay. and and um, you can get you know you can sign up to get the the tokens to um, play with each of them. Terrific. So, Jennifer, thanks stuff. so much for taking Thank the time. Thank you for having me, David. Really <laughs> Take care. All right.